Oh, hey there. Today's question, would the Hyperloop be a love train? During World War II, 3% of the world's population died as a direct result of the war. In Poland, the percentage was 17, and in Belarus, it was 25. Imagine losing one out of four people you know within a span of six years, and that's if you're lucky enough to live through it yourself. But there is hope. Global trade is connecting the economies of the world like never before. Meanwhile, it's becoming easier to interact with people in other countries. Both of these trends have led to a decrease in warfare. Tube travel has the potential to contribute to this process by further extending global trade and by enhancing international communication. So let's dive into the specifics. Currently, we have no means of traveling long distances without sacrificing valuable time and money. According to Daryl Oster, founder of ET3, tube transport could allow people to travel more than 10 times as quickly as planes for about a tenth of the cost. Increased travel would open up new opportunities for interaction between people of different backgrounds. This face-to-face -face communication would be far more effective than phones or the internet could ever be. What excites me most is the possibility of greater friendship and even love developing across borders. These strong personal ties would be beneficial because humans who understand each other would be less likely to engage in war. According to a study by Morning Consult, Global interactions could foster peace at an even more basic level. The study asked Americans to identify North Korea on a world map. In addition, they were asked about their support for various diplomatic and military actions against North Korea. Those who could identify the country were more likely to favor diplomacy, while those who could not identify it were more likely to favor military action. Furthermore, the study revealed that people who had traveled internationally or who knew someone of Korean ancestry were more likely to identify the country's location. Now, if we shift from our social perspective to an economic perspective, we can see even more evidence that tube travel would limit war. As with passenger transportation, the cost of global trade would also decrease, making countries more interdependent. Stanford economist Matthew O. Jackson developed a theoretical model that found a strong link between economic dependence and peace. Two examples he provided were the Second Congo War and the Gulf War. The Second Congo War was the deadliest conflict since World War II, with over 4 million deaths. The African countries lacked a strong network of trade ties with other countries, so there was little incentive for outside powers to intervene. In contrast, the Gulf War saw 10,000 deaths. Jackson speculates that the lower death toll in this war was a result of U.S. interests in protecting its access to oil. This situation may sound selfish, but it could be a valuable tool to prevent future wars. Growing up, I was told that war is inevitable, but I am not willing to accept that. When I have kids, I want them to grow up in a society that values life more than anything else. I want them to know that war can be prevented. I challenge everyone watching this to think of just one way that you can bring the world closer to peace. The world is a big place, but even small actions can have an amazing impact. In closing, I recognize that tube travel cannot end war on its own, but it is a step in the right direction. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time on tube travel. All of you.